The group all had found out that they were in the barns. Elia woke up to see that Sister Bear was not in the safe house. She grabs a weapon and she slowly walks out of the safe room. She killed a few wandering zombies and then she found Sister Bear who was sitting on a picnic table near where the bumper cards are. Hey sister, what are you doing here? Ellie asked as she sat down with sister. Nothing is wrong, Ellie, sister sighed in sadness. Something is wrong. You don't sound like yourself. Please tell me what's wrong, Ellie said as she placed down her weapon. It's just about Zoe, sister sighed. Since Ellis confessed his love for her, she has been spending more time with him since. That's what couples do when they're together. They do things that they want to do as a couple, Ellie explained. Zoe wants to spend time with Ellis at the time, same time he does with her. They're great friends. I just think Zoe's gonna date is dating Ellis. She'll forget about me and even spend time with me and brother, sister said as she fiddled with her jump rope in her hands. Sister, don't show Zoe will not forget you and spend any time with you and brother. What makes you say that? Ellie asked. Because before Zoe met Ellis, she was like a big sister to me. Sister said as she looked up at Ellie. Sister started explaining to Ellie about some of the fun, fun times that, that she had with Zoe. As they were just both sitting on the picnic table, where the group found Ellie and Sister at a picnic table. There you guys are. We were a bit worried, Zoe said. Why were you two here? Nick asked the girls. We were just talking, but other than that, we haven't heard any special infected around here, Ellie said. Then the group heard a charger sound as he was nearby. I hear a charger. Watch out for him. Ellis warned everyone as the group walked towards the bumper cars. They killed the zombies that were wandering and saw the charger at the doorway of the bumper cars. Zoe was able to sneak behind the charger and used her katana as she was able to kill the charger from behind. She was able to kill the charger without him knowing that she was behind him. Got him, Zoe said. Nice shot. Rochelle smiled at Zoe at what she did. Then sister got on a bumper car. Can we play bumper cars, please? Sister asked. You know the answer. Now we have no time for that, Ellie said as sister sighed as she jumped off the bumper car. Okay. Sister sadly said as the group walked through the buildings next to out of the bumper cars. They got into another game to which was like whack-a-mole. Sister wanted to play that and Ellis and Zoe were getting tired of sister wasting their time. They just wanted to save Brother Bear and get Sister home. Wow, this game must be cool, Sister said, as Ellis and Zoe then got annoyed and walked over towards her. Now, Sister, we didn't come here to play games, Zoe said. Zoe's right. Remember what we have said about games and shit like that, Ellis said, as Zoe sighed and the group continued to go through the barn. When they had to climb through over the barns onto the roof, they had killed a spitter and a boomer along the way. And as soon as they got close to the stadium where the concert was being held out, as soon as the gates were opening, the group ran inside as they were shooting down the hordes of infected. As they, the infected were, hordes were coming all the way down, the group made it to the safe room. We made it, Ellis said as he closes the door to the safe room. Then sister was talking to Ellie about her story with Witter Jones on how Zoe saved her along with her friends and brother bear. Um, yeah. So... Zoe said as she stood close to Ellis. You okay? He asked. I'm okay, Ellis. I'm just worried about sister, Zoe replied. Why? He asked her. Well, the more we spend time together, I think sister is becoming jealous of us dating, Zoe said as she hung her head down in shame, while Ellis looked down with a sad look on his face. Zoe, now don't say that. I'm just sure she just doesn't know me as much as she he knows you. When she gets to know me more, then I hope she will change and accept it, Ellis said as he lifted her head and the couple looked at each other's eyes. Sister didn't pay any attention to what was going on with Ellis and Zoe. The group decided that they would rest in the safe room for now and then come up with a plan when they're ready to catch the chopper so they can get out of the carnival. After the group got inside the safe room and took a break, they all prepared themselves to leave the safe room. Now here's the plan. Coach said, as he gathered the group. When the helicopter flies to the stadium, we will put on the Midnight Riders music to signal him, and he will see the signal and pick us all up. Maybe he can help us find Brother Bear, Coach said to the group. Sounds like a great idea, 
I sure want to kill that motherfucker that took Sid Brother Bear away from Sister. Rochelle growled as the group were making sure that everyone knows the plan and know what to do. Meanwhile, Farmer Ben was at the parish bridge, was looking into his magic mirror. Magic mirror, see what the group of survivors are planning. Farmer Ben said as the magic mirror was showing Farmer Ben what the survivors, along with Sister Bear, were getting ready to leave the safe room. Going to get rescue, are we? Well, we won't let you win that easy. Farmer Ben had to send the special and defected to the Carnival Stadium to plan an attack for the survivors when the group got to the stadium. They looked around. No one was there except for the group. Wow, this stadium place looks huge, Sister said. This is what concerts like being held before the outbreak, that is, Ellis said. This is where the Midnight Riders perform here? Ellie asked. Yep, Ellie, that's right. I used to love their music, and I still do, Ellis replied. We will need to get the lights on, Rochelle said, as Coach walked up to the bleachers and got the control system where they were controlling the lights. He turned on the stage lights and they came on. Now what? Nick asked. We need to start the concert down at that stage. It will be attracting the horde of infected, so we gotta make sure that we are ready, Coach said. As everyone was on stage, Ellis was at the mic. What is Ellis doing? Sister asked. I think he's just trying to entertain Zoe, Rochelle said. Check one, check one, two, Ellis said as he was testing the mic. Zoe then laughed. Gonna reach for the top, stay on the mountain. Ellis sang that part of the song that he knew. Every lady's crazy when her daddy's not around. Ellis sang more as Zoe laughed. She then walked up to Ellis. I love your voice when you sing, Ellis. It makes me feel like I'm in heaven. Zoe said as they she got close to the controls of the stage. Ellis started the concert. The song by the Midnight Riders were playing as Ellis stared into Zoe's arms. Hey, Ellis said to Zoe. I love you, he said. As he and Zoe were about to kiss, the horde of infected started to attack the group. They were able to shoot down the infected, including special ones like chargers, jockeys, spitters, boomers, and hunters. Then they heard a tank. He was running up towards the group. Tank, light him up, Rochelle said as the group started to shoot down the tank. As the group were walking down, the t shooting down the tank, the jockey jumped on Rochelle. Ah, get this thing off of my head! She screams as Zoe and Ella started to shoot the jockey until he was dead. Then he was able to let Rochelle go by the time the last few bullets were shot in him. We got him, Ellis said as he and Zoe both cheered at the same time. They both looked at each other and laughed. Then another horde of infected, along with special infected, were attacking the group. While they were shooting down the infected, a charger charged a Nick in one corner of the stadium. Shoot this thing! He's crushing me! Nick cried out for help as Ellis was shooting down the infected to get to the charger. Started to shoot him until the last bullet killed the charger. Nick got up and Ellis turned around to see that Ellie was the one who killed the charger. Thanks, Ellis and Ellie, Nick said. You need help, so I fired the last bullet at him, Ellie said as fireworks were causing an uproar of loud music. The group was all being prepared for the helicopter to pick them all up. By the time the helicopter got to the left side of the seats, a tank was killed and the whole group started to run. Chopper's here, let's go! Zoe shouted as the group began to run towards the helicopter. After everyone got on the helicopter and took off, no one got left behind. We all made it. This is amazing, Coach said, and no one died, to which is also another, Rochelle said, as Sister was cuddling with Zoe. How do you feel, he asked. A bit better thanks to Ellis, Zoe said, as her cramps weren't as hurting as much. It's not getting any better by the infection, you know. Yeah, it's been hell all right, Ellis replied. I just wish Francis and Louis would have come with us, Sister suggested. Then they could have helped us. Well... I do, sister, I do too, but sometimes people have to make their choices, Zoe replied. As the helicopter was approaching the swamp, the pilot became a zombie and started to attack anyone inside. Nick shot the pilot and the group all got off the helicopter safely with parachutes, and they all ended up in a train cart that was abandoned. Is everyone okay? Coach asked. Yep, we're okay, Rochelle replied. Nick, what the hell? You shot the pilot! Ellis said, as he was angry with Nick. 
Well, he wasn't doing a good... Well, as he was a zombie, Ellis, he must have got bitten by the time he picked us up. Nick replied. That's true, but does anyone have any idea on where we are? Rochelle asked, as no one really knew where they were. It's very dark and it's a swampy area. Maybe someone can help us, Ellie suggested. The group got themselves prepared, and as soon as they were all ready, they headed out of the train cart. They also got into a gas station where there were a few wandering zombies that they killed, but nothing unusual happened at the time. While the group was shouting down the wandering zombies, while they were walking down the path of the swamp, they checked out a few houses. Ellie has an idea, so she whispered her idea to Rochelle and Coach's ear, along with Nick. After they heard about her idea, they smiled. That's a great idea, Ellie. That way we can have Ellis and Zoe feel closer, Rochelle replied. Nick and Coach turned to Ellis. Come on, Ellis, we have an idea, Coach said as he and Nick took Ellis as they went into one house. What is the idea? Ellis asked. You'll find out. It's a surprise, Nick said, as Rochelle along with Ellis and sister looked at Zoe. Come on, on, Zoe. Ellie told us your idea. Her idea, actually, Rochelle said, as she and Ellie walked Zoe to another house. What is this idea? Zoe asked. You'll see. <laughs> Ellie giggled as Sister Bear was quiet and didn't say a word about it as the girls walked in. Meanwhile, the boys... Ellis had his shower and he smelled nice. It had been a long time since he had a shower since the outbreak began. Well, I showered good. I can't remember when the last time I had a shower, Ellis said as he wrapped a towel around his waist. Well, I'll have a shower next and then when I come out, Nick can have a good turn. We haven't had a shower in a while, Coach said as Nick was helping Ellis dry off. I'm not sure if I can do this, Nick. I mean, what kind of idea is this? Ellis asked. Ellie told me, Rochelle and Coach, the idea, and it was you and Zoe to try to get closer together in your relationship. Nick replied as he was finished drying off Ellis. That is a great idea. Even we feel th that way. Ellis was about to put on his bull shifter's shirt when Nick stopped him. Here, you can use this, buddy, Nick said, handing Ellis a midnight rider's shirt. Holy shit, where did you find that? Ellis asked Nick. Before we left the amusement park, I saw this, and I thought you would like it. I also got Coach one too, Nick said, as Coach had his towel around his waist and walked out of the shower. Shower's all yours, Nick, Coach said to him. Also, you can borrow this jacket as part of my suit, Nick said as he handed Ellis his jacket up as a part of his white suit. Thanks, Nick, Ellis said as he was dressed and ready while Coach puts on his boxers and pants. When he saw the Midnight Rider's shirt on Ellis, Nick got you one? Cool, Coach said, as he saw that Nick got Coach one as well. So Coach put on the Midnight Rider's shirt as well. Ah, oh, Coach, I am nervous. What if she breaks up with me? Ellis asked as he was putting on some cologne on him. Ellis, I don't think bad, don't think bad things from that may happen. That will just make your time not good, Coach said. You're right. I am a bit nervous, Ellis replied. Meanwhile, with the girls, Zoe was all showered as she put her bra and underwear on. I'm a bit nervous, Rochelle and Ellie. I'm not sure if I can do this either, Zoe said as Rochelle was brushing her hair. I know you're the girl that he loves, but believe me, Ellis does want you. He would not want anyone else but you as a girlfriend. Now you're going to tell him how much you love him when you see him, Rochelle replied. Zoe, I found you a sweater, Ellie said. As she showed Zoe the sweater, I know it's black and I know it's not your fave, but it will do. I don't care about the color, Ellie. As long as it's another sweater, it will do, Zoe replied, as Ellie took Zoe's red sweater to hand wash it with. I'll wash this sweater for you, Ellie said, as Zoe thanked her and saw Sister was quiet and hadn't said anything much. Sister's been quiet? I wonder why, Zoe asked, as Rochelle was just brushing her hair. I did manage to get some words out of her, but she didn't give me the whole reason. That is something I don't understand, Coach said. Well, Rochelle said, I'll talk to her, Ellie said as Sister got up, walked outside, and sat on the porch on one of the houses that the girls were in. What did she say? Zoe asked. She's, um... Ellie was trying to come up with the right words, but she trailed off. If you can't find the right words, Ellie, that's okay. You can tell us later, Zoe replied. She might not be feeling well, Zoe. Maybe you can ask her if she's feeling okay. 
Rochelle said. I can ask her that, Zoe said. As she puts on her new sweater, walks out of one of the houses with Rochelle and as Ellie and sister followed. Zoe met with the guys at the restaurant as music was playing. Ellis was standing in front of Zoe as they were having a dinner together and even started to dance. In this time of moment, you can't really do this in the zombie outbreak because you're always fighting, trying to survive, etc. But however though, this was one of the only good moments that they can actually do something fun and not really having to worry about any infected coming up and sneaking and biting into you at night. After the dancing and fun was over, Elliston looked at Zoe as the two were in the ferry by a area on the docks. Swimming with gators? Why, no thank you, Ellis said as he saw the sign that said no swimming. You're cool, Ellis, to be the best boyfriend, Zoe said as Ellis held Zoe's hand. Zoe, are you happier with me? Ellis asked her. Of course I am, Ellis. You're the only man in the world a girl could ever ask for, Zoe replied as Ellis cuddled with her. He kissed her forehead. Zoe, I like it when you said that you're the only woman in the world a man could ever ask for. Ellis replied as he hugged Zoe. She could feel his warm breath on her skin. All right, Ellis, let's get ready to call the ferry, Ro Zoe said. Rochelle then got the ferry to working and get the ferry to come to them from one side to the other, where the group is. The sound that attracted a horde of zombies, the group was able to take down the horde as the ferry got into a group, and they all started to jump in. They all started the ferry and from the inside, as the ferry was taking the group far away from the horde of infected. Now there is a shanty town not far from here, so maybe there might be some people here? Rochelle asked. Alive, undead, or, or alive and not zombies? Nick asked. Alive and not zombies, Rochelle said. I hope there's another group of people. They could use our help, Coach replied. As the ferry got to the other side of the group walk through the muddy swamp, they then got on the walkway, which was safer. They killed two jockeys along with three spitters, and after walking through the swamp for some time, they found a safe house on the drain pipe. Once everyone was inside, the group was safe, at least for now, that is, until when they have to travel again. When Zoe and Ellis put back on what they were wearing before their date, after 10 minutes, the group was all prepared to exit out of the safe room. Rochelle looked at the wandering zombies. Some of them were mud men. Watch out for the mud men, she warned everyone. What are mud men? Sister asked. There are zombies that are covered in mud, Rochelle replied. We'll have to watch out for those, Coach said. Time to get wet, Nick chuckled. <laughs> no, wait, I'm serious. Zombie brains will come out of this suit, but not swamp water, Nick said as Rochelle smacked him. What did I just say about complaining? Rochelle was cross at Nick. I don't want to hear any more of it, she said. The group then walked out from the safe room and they walked on the swamp water. They killed a few wandering zombies when Ellis found a path. There's a path we can get through, he said. As the group then walked through the swampy forest, Ellis looked around. Zoe was behind him. Now stay close, Zoe. I don't want to let anything hurt you, he said. He saw a dead person that was attached to a tree. That could be the dead pilot that Nick shot, Zoe asked, as Ellis took the auto shotgun from the dead body. It's possible, Zoe. Not really sure if it is or not, Ellis replied as the group continued to walk away through the swamping area. Sister could see that the plane that had crashed. There's a downed plane, she said, and then there was crying. There's a witch. Kill those lights. Rochelle said, as everyone did what Rochelle said, as Ellis alone with the group walked past the witch. She got up and started to chase after Ellie, who was being startled by Sister, who made the witch think that Ellie startled her. Ellis got in the way to save Ellie, just as the witch clawed at Ellis, leaving a huge scar on his arm where his tattoo was. Zoe, along with the group, was able to shoot down the witch. Zoe, who was scared, scared ran towards Ellis. Ellis, are you okay? Zoe asked as she helped Ellis up. I'm okay, Ellis replied. Then Ellie gave Sister an angry glare. She knew that Sister was trying to get rid of Ellis, but she didn't want to say it out loud to the group. Sister Bear, why did you startle the witch? Was this just to kill Ellis? Ellie then asked while she crossed her arms. Sister couldn't say a word. If you're trying to kill Ellis, you shouldn't do that. That will just break Zoe's heart and make everybody upset. So you need to say you're sorry. 
After the group was heard, sister was behind the group was really mad with her. Even Zoe was angrier than she was. Now what is your problem, sister? You trying to kill Ellis? Zoe asked as she was close to start screaming at her when sister walked away. Wow, she's a total bitch, Ellis said. Ellis, you know name calling hurts people's feelings, Rochelle said. Here, Ellis, why not I fix your you up? Zoe said as Ellis took off his shirt as Zoe sees the deep gashing wounds on Ellis's arm where his tattoo was. Zoe cleaned off the blood of the wounds as he groaned in pain. I'm okay, Zoe. It stings, Ellis replied as Zoe finished cleaning the wounds. Then she dressed them with bandages and then Ellis felt a bit better. Thanks, Zoe, he replied. He put his shirt back on. Sister was in a ball as she was sleeping, and Ellie felt that she was tired. She must have been tired after a long day. Why not someone who could carry her? Ellie suggested. Rochelle was the only one who walked towards Sister and put her, her in her arms. You'll have to cover me while I carry Sister, so when we open this door of this plane, we'll have to shoot down the zombies, Rochelle said. As the door of the plane opened, the alarm went off and it attracted a huge horde of zombies. They started to attack the group of survivors. They were able to shoot them all down, and the noise didn't wake Sister up at all. She was in a very deep sleep. The group continued to walk down the swampy area when they saw the safe house that was at a shantytown inside. There's a shantytown. We made it, Zoe said. Hello, anyone here? Ellie called out. Hello, Nick also called, but no one was responding. We better go inside. Maybe they're staying away from the zombies, Ellis said, as the group ran inside the safe room when a tank was behind them. The group got inside the safe room and locked the door of the room, just in time. The tank giving up, knowing that breaking the safe room door would be impossible, so he left. The tank gave up. I didn't expect him to go that easy to give up, Ellie said as Rochelle placed the sleeping bear cub on a mat. She didn't mean to try to kill Ellis. Maybe she was too tired to explain herself, Rochelle said, as Zoe took off her red sweater and placed it over her sister. She is very tired, and I didn't mean to get so angry with her, Zoe said as she walked outside the safe room of Shantytown. There was no one there, so Ellis followed her and sat down. You okay? Ellis asked, as Zoe pulled out a picture of sister and her family with Zoe in it. I'm just worried about sister, Zoe said. Like if something bad happen would have happened to her and I'm not there, I would never forgive myself. Zoe began to cry as Ellis comforted her by patting her back and was holding her close. I guess I was so harsh on her, but I love you, Ellis, but I was scared that I would have lo lost you as well, Zoe sobbed. Zoe, don't cry. I'll be with you. Ellis said to his girlfriend, I guess you were a bit harsh on her, but... There will be times where you just gotta be a little bit harsh, but not too much of that that would feel hurt. But I guess you were not very happy, Ellis said. Yeah, Zoe replied. After the group rested for a few hours, they prepared themselves and went outside the safe room, shooting down the wandering zombies in the shantytown. I think the people there here didn't make it, Coach said. I was having a feeling about that, Rochelle replied, as the group walked through the abandoned shantytown that Coach had was disappeared. Where is Coach? Ellis said. I don't see him, Ellie replied as she saw Coach who was being crushed by a charger. Charger, shoot him! Ellie said as everyone was shooting at the charger when Sister shot the last bullet to kill the charger. Coach saw that Sister was holding the Magnum gun and was surprised. Great shot, girl. You did it. You saved me, Coach said. Thanks, Sister replied. Now the next safe room shouldn't be far, Rochelle said. The group started walking through Shantytown, through the swampy path. After a while of walking of shooting down the zombies, they found a safe room on the walkway. They got on the walkway and found the smoker inside. Ellis shot at the smoker and he exploded when he died. I found a safe house, Ellis called, as the group got to the safe house. Everyone was safe, so it was a long night, so the group decided to spend their night in the safe house. They all agreed that they would be moving on in the morning, and they all prayed that Brother Bear would still be alive and okay once they reach him. Zoe was the first one to be woken up by Ellie, who was shaking her lightly awake. It's time to get up, Zoe. We have a busy day ahead, Ellie said softly, as Zoe opened her eyes to look at Ellie. 
Morning, Ellie. What time is it? Zoe asked. It's 7 a.m., Zoe. It's the sunrise, Ellie said. As she quietly opens the safe room door, Zoe can tell that Coach was already up. I've already shot down the wandering zombies, so it should be safe for you girls to go and get some breakfast for all of us to eat, Coach replied. As Zoe and Ellie walked through the swampy area, they looked around. It's very quiet. Too quiet, Zoe said to Ellie. I wonder if there'll be anyone around to help us. There is a plantation house, Ellie pointed out, as Zoe saw a forest that has a plantation house. That's amazing. I wonder if there's a boat or something we can escape on, Zoe asked Ellie. Coach already checked out the place. There is a boat at the docks for the gate at the plantation house. He's already cleared that place out while we were all sleeping, so I think this place is really cool, Ellie said, as she found two baskets and two step ladders, as she handed Zoe one of each. But Coach sadly said that no one was in the house. Either they became infected or they died down, but who knows what would have happened. But at least, after we have breakfast, we can all get moving without any infected around, Ellie said as Zoe started to pick the fresh fruit from the trees that they were picking at. Don't worry about Sister Bear. She hasn't been happy since me and Ellis hook up together, Zoe said to Ellie. I believe she's jealous. I'm starting to think about that too, Zoe. Sister must not be liking you and Ellis dating, but it is you and Ellis' relationship with each other. No one should ever control that or say anything about it, Ellie replied as she and Zoe collected the fruit. Let's get back to the group. They must be awake by now, Zoe said as she and Ellie were carrying the baskets of fruit to the safe house. I was thinking about staying here with Ellis. Like after I help Sister Bear find brother and then get home, I would like to stay at this time. Really? That would be great if you stayed here with Ellis. You guys would be a great couple like you are now. But without the zombies, of course, Ellie laughed. As soon as the outbreak is over, I'll settle in with a new life with Ellis, Zoe replied. As Tutal and his gang were hiding in an old house, watching Ellie and Zoe walking towards the safe house. Why did you go to bear country after you handled Winter Jones? Ellie asked Zoe. Well, after Bill died to save us all, I went back with bear country with sister and her family because they've always looked up to me as their big sister. But I am hoping that sister will understand, Zoe replied as to Ellie's question. Sister will just have to learn to accept those things, like if we don't like them or not. Ellie said as she got back to the group, and they showed everyone what is for breakfast. Fresh fruit, me and Zoe picked them. They look great to eat, Ellis said. What fruits are they? Mixture of fresh fruits, so we can make a fruit salad, Ellie said, as sister pulled out some yogurt. We can have some fruit with yogurt. There's a lot in there since Nick found them in fresh, sister said. Nice idea, sister, Nick said. I'm starting to like her. Sounds like a great breakfast. I'm in. Rochelle replied, as the group began to dig into their breakfast after the group finished. A while later, they prepared themselves as they all left the safe room. Then they heard snickering and laughing. What the hell is messing around with us? Coach asked. I think it's too tall in this gang. We should hide so they don't see us, Sister said. The whole group ran inside a house, and they were all on the ground. Coach said he made a pit for all those free clowns. He did it while we were asleep, Ellie said. Do you see any? Zoe asked Ellis, as he was taking a peek to see two tall in this gang acting like idiots. They are, but they're acting like a bunch of assholes, Ellis replied, as Coach was taking a peek. They'll fall in the pit, Ellis. Watch where they're standing, Coach replied. Two tall in this gang were standing around a pile of leaves, to which what they're not aware of was a pitfall. You're an asshole, two tall said to Smirk. No, you are a retarded one, Smirk replied. Then the gang all fell straight through the pit. Soon everyone laughed at what they saw. Help! Let us out of here, Tutal called. As Rochelle and Zoe both looked down at Tutal and his gang, who were in the pit. No can do, assholes. Why don't you start trying to be nice for a change? Zoe said as she walked away. You hear her. If you can't be nice, then fuck off and don't bother us, Rochelle added. As she also walked away, after the group made it to the plantation house, they looked around. This is the plantation house? Man, it's huge. Sadly, there's no one still alive. I checked all over the place, Coach said, as a spitter was running up the path of the plantation house as it passed the survivors. Hey, it's a spitter, 
Ellis said, shouted, as Ellie made the kill on the spitter. Nice shot, Ellis said to Ellie. Thanks. Ellie smiled as the group climbed the stairs, and they all walked down around the plantation house. There was no infected. After looking around from the inside of the house, they walked to the house to the front where they were at. There was a hedge like a park with a gate. There's a radio. Maybe if we use it, someone might respond to it and help us, Nick said, as the group all prepared themselves and they all walked down to the gate of the plantation house. Howdy, Ellis responded to the radio. Hello, I can't believe I hear voices. I wonder where you guys are, because if you tell me where you guys are, I could pick you guys up, a voice from the radio said. We're at a plantation house, Rochelle replied. All right, name's Virgil. I'll be there in 10 minutes, so hold off the hordes of zombies as long as you can. Virgil said from the radio, a horde of infected began to attack the group. As down together, they all took down the horde of infected. They also shot down two jockeys and a boomer. And then when they had a tank attack them, they all brought down the tank and it was too easy. The second horde of infected, to which the group was able to take down, the second horde of infected. They killed a charger along with a hunter and a smoker. Then they had a second tank attack them, and they were able to bring them down. The second tank to which they were still able to bring them down without any problem. Virgil's here, let's go, Zoe said, as the gates burst open, and the group all ran towards the boat, to which it was at the end of the docks. As soon as they got on the boat, Virgil, who was driving the boat, got in moving, and the group was safe. That was too close, Ellis said. Yeah, that it was, Zoe replied. Thanks for saving us, Virgil, Coach said. It was my pleasure to meet you guys. You're all trying to survive out here, Virgil replied, as Sister and Zoe stood up. Do you happen to have a bear cub named Brother Bear? Zoe asked. Sorry, you guys. I don't have a cub by the name of Brother Bear, but I can help you guys get to him, Virgil replied, as the group was getting settled in the boat with Virgil. Meanwhile, Farmer Ben was at the bridge of the parish, where he was looking into his magic mirror to see the survivors, along with Sister Bear, on a boat. Are they still alive, are we? Farmer Ben asked. If you're going to survive, then we will see. He then sees the tank and charger look at Farmer Ben. Well, Farmer Ben, what do you expect us to do? The tank set asked. I can see that Virgil guy on the boat will ask this group to get some gas at the detailed Mississippi so we can attack them and track them down, Farmer Ben said. He then looked at them and started to try to talk to them about their plan and explain how it should go for when the time was right, when they should go and make an attack on the survivors along with everyone else.